Good morning, everyone. So, <clears throat> let me clear my throat. Feels like it's been quite a long time since I sat down and filmed a video, and it's most likely because it has been quite some time since I've sat down and filmed a video. I talked about this a bit on my Twitch channel. Life has been getting the best of me lately, and my schedule has just been super hectic and crazy. I have been doing a bunch of shoots, so those are very tiring and take a lot of my time. Besides that, I've been working on some other side projects as well. I won't get too much into it because I feel like you guys are like, yeah, 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 like everyone has a very busy life, which is very much the truth. But I wanted to um, state the facts <laughs> before I get started. Also, I know I look naked. I'm not, I'm wearing a tube top. I guess I'm just gonna look naked in the video, but I'm really not. So now that I have chatted your ear off, we will get to the actual content of the video, and for this video, I'm gonna be doing a review on a full face of Japanese makeup. These are kind of like popular items I'm seeing online. I read really good things about, and I wanted to pick them up. I got them from YesStyle. I always will link them down below, and I'm gonna share with you guys my thoughts because I'm actually going to Japan and also Korea in the fall time, so I wanted to get like a little bit of a head start before I went to Japan see what kind of beauty products are out there so when I go there, I kind of have an idea of products I'm interested in. Okay, now without much further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So the first product I'm gonna be talking about is this from Deja Vu. This is the Natural Lasting Eyebrow. Now you guys might have remembered a couple years ago, actually this is like way back when I first started my channel, I reviewed their like fiber wig mascara, I think that's what it's called. It was like one of the top selling mascaras in Japan as well as in Korea. I had a very adverse reaction to that, but other than that, I wanted to try this guy out. This was about $9, and so it wasn't a super expensive eyebrow pencil. To me, I really like that this went onto my eyebrows very smooth. I didn't find that I had to like press hard or put a lot of pressure, and the color was very nice. It's pretty much your standard run of the mill eyebrow pencil. I will say one thing that I really liked about this is this is very waterproof. Sometimes when products say they're waterproof, they're not really, but this guy actually held up through me sweating. I actually went on a run with this guy, and obviously your eyebrows catch a lot of sweat, and I didn't find that my brows were moving. So if you're someone who has that issue, I would definitely recommend checking something like this out. Moving on to the next product, we have the Excel Skinny Rich Eyeshadow Quad. Now this is actually something that I reviewed in the past. This is like one of those Cosma or Cosme, oof, I know I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, award winning products. I did a whole video on me picking some of them up and this was one of them. And so I, I remember saying in that video how I felt like this was kind of an expensive quad for what you get. Like I understand the concept and let me put this out there first. These shadows are very beautiful and creamy and rich. The pigmentation is not quite there compared to like Western eyeshadows, but I think that has a lot to do with Japanese trends. Again, with like Asian trends and Asian beauty, I think when it comes to eye makeup, it tends to be a little bit more natural, more doll-like, more fresh looking. So I totally get that. And like I said, it makes up for it in the sense of the formulation of it because it is so smooth and soft. One thing that I found interesting is that this is actually supposed to have squat in the product itself to help with that kind of like soft moisturizing <laughs> component which is kind of interesting when it comes to an eyeshadow again I, I don't know if I can confidently recommend this if this is something you're thinking about getting I don't think you'd be disappointed only if you're more budget conscious and you're the type of person who goes for those pigmented shadows that's kind of where I'm 50 50 on this palette I will continue to use this though and when I go to Japan this will be something that I'll probably look into more because I'm sure they will be much more affordable there um, and yeah that's my thoughts on that. <laughs> eyeliners. Now I feel like Japan and Asia in general is really known for their eyeliners. So I actually have two here, two from very popular brands. I'll go over this one first. This one's from a bland, bland? I can't talk today. <laughs> this one's from a brand called Flow Fushi. Moat liner in cherry cheeks, so um, it has a brush tip as the liner. And the Flow Fushi brand is supposed to be very known for their eyeliners. I will say that I felt like, especially in this color, and it was will most likely be very different from their black and brown colors, 
Because this is that burgundy color, it did come off a little bit like, I felt like it was like a watercolor of eyeliner. So it wasn't like super dark and pigmented. In fact, it was a very liquidy formula. So it did go on my eyes very easily. I felt like the brush was easy for me to control. Another concept behind this, which I actually thought was kind of cool when I was doing some more research, evidently Flofushi's brush is supposed to kind of be similar to a calligraphy brush, which I thought was very beautiful. And I could kind of see that because it is a very, precise brush. I'm trying to think of the word there. However, if you're looking for like burgundy, like punch in your face, burgundy color pigment, this is not quite there. It is still very pretty and like I said, this is very long lasting. Again, I went on a run with this and it did not budge. So I will definitely look into the black and brown when I get to Japan. I would not probably repurchase this color because I can't foresee myself being like an everyday burgundy eyeliner type of girl. This is kind of more for like special occasions. And the packaging is really nice. Like this is a very like heavy eyeliner. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm gonna look into the other shades. Now this is the other eyeliner I picked up. This is from Dolly Wink. Dolly Wink is also, I think a popular brand. I don't know if it's one of those brands that's like popular outside of Japan and not really in Japan. If you know what I mean, let me know. Um, but this is a brand that I hear a lot of people talk about, especially their mascaras. And so this was a very nice black eyeliner. Actually, this is not the first time I've used the Dolly Wink eyeliner. I've actually used this in the past, but that was like maybe four or five years ago. And again, this is one of those brush type of pen liners. I like that it's very pigmented, it's very dark, again, very long lasting. and. Yeah, that's pretty much what I have to say about it. I mean, I will probably still offer my Clio liner over this, but if I had to use this, I wouldn't be mad at all. Am I am I describing this well? <laughs> am I just like going back and forth on things for you guys? Um, yeah. Now this is something that I just threw in here because again, it's very popular. At least it's very popular here. This might be one of those things that might not be popular in Japan either, but it is the Shu Uemura Eyelash Curler. This is one of my favorite eyelash curlers. I've been pretty much using this for a couple years now. So this is something I already had in my collection. I didn't even have to go and pick it up. I do recommend this if you have kind of longer, sh longer eyes and you don't have um, as much of a curve to it. Sometimes I find with just drugstore or run-of-the-mill eyelash curlers. I end up pinching my eyelid because it's a little too curved for me. Um, and so this is just the perfect curvature for my eye shape. And it does get nice and close. You can kind of pinch and move upward through the lash like so. And I know these are kind of a bit more of like an investment type of makeup tool, but I've had mine for years and these are the types of things that you know, you buy once and you're good to go for a while. Mascara, so I was reading about this mascara, evidently this is a popular one. This is from a brand called Facio, I think that's how you pronounce it, and this is their volume mascara. Huh? Is that what it's called? Let me just make sure. <laughs> I had to write the names down. This is not a fiber mascara, which fiber mascaras, at least it seems like to me, are very popular in Japan because it seems like most companies make fiber mascaras. I mentioned this obviously in the beginning of the video, but the reason that I don't care for fiber mascaras is because the fibers will fall off and irritate my eyes. I have the most sensitive eyes in the world, so I have to be very careful with what I apply on my eyes, obviously. And fiber mascaras and me do not mesh well, so I had to find one that was not a fiber mascara, which was this one. And the brush is a bit unique. It has like a bit of a comb on one end and then more of the traditional wand on the other. It is like a plastic wand. And I like it because I can use the reverse side, like the belly of the wand and kind of volumize and thicken everything. And then with the comb at the top, I can go through and take out any clumps I might've created. So this is a really nice mascara, long lasting. I didn't find that it was flaking on me. Also, I like that it was layerable because for me, I apply one to two to three coats of mascara. What can I say? I like my lashes thick and voluminous. And so this was a really nice option for me. I'm gonna look into more of Facio products when I get there. And so far, so good. Like all the products I've mentioned, I have had pretty good experiences with. And um, yeah, just moving on to the next thing. <laughs> What's next? 
Oh yeah. So this is a foundation from a brand, I believe it's called Ipsa, and this is the Relax Day Foundation Medium. I don't know if medium is the shade or Bonk. like medium coverage, I'm not sure. I read really good reviews on this. This is like a liquidy type of foundation, so you do have to give it a little shake. This is actually really interesting because I was not expecting this when I got it, mostly because it was a very light type of foundation, meaning it didn't offer a ton of coverage. Realistically, this is a foundation designed for someone who has pretty good skin to begin with. It also had a bit of a dry finish to it, so for me with my dry skin, I actually did not really care for this. I felt like I could use a little bit of dew back in my skin, and the color was a little bit lighter. Obviously, I'm a bit more tan, so for me, when it comes to Asian foundations in general, it's kind of hard for me to find a foundation to match my skin. So this was something I wasn't actually that crazy about. I also remember this being a bit on the pricier side, so I will not repurchase this foundation. I might actually look into this brand a bit more, but I just did not love this from the get-go. So for concealer, I picked up this from Shiseido. This is the Spots Cover Foundation. Uh, even though it says foundation, um, I've been using it as concealer. This is the type of product I can't imagine someone using as foundation because it's a very thick and heavy type of product. Having said that though, that's actually why I like this for concealer is because it is super pigmented and it is one of those types of products like the lightest amount on any type of pimple or imperfection will completely camouflage whatever spot you're trying to camouflage. I will say I don't think that this would work very well on areas that have a lot of movement, say like under the eyes or anywhere it might crease because it is a bit of a thicker consistency. But this is pretty easy to blend out. Um, like I said, I think the best method of using this is just to lightly tap finger and then tap it on the spot that you want to conceal. I guess you could use this as like stage makeup if you really want like that, like whoa camouflage face. If you want to hide your face for basically everything, use this. <laughs> and again, one of those types of products I look at and I'm like, I will never run out of you. I will end up having to throw you away like five years from now because you get too old. <laughs> Don't judge me, I know we all have those types of products. Now this next product is actually something I reviewed on my channel in the past because this was also one of the Cosma award winning products that I reviewed. This is from a brand called Canmake and I have to say this already, I'm a big fan of Canmake. I think this will be a brand that I'm most excited to check out in Japan. So leave me a recommendations down below. This is their marshmallow face powder and I absolutely love this powder. It's actually a fairly high coverage powder for being a compact powder. It matches my skin well, it mattifies my skin without feeling too heavy and this was just something I really enjoyed. It's also Canmake and I think Canmake is one of the more affordable brands. This is something that when I use, I like selectively spot set my skin. So most of the time when I use powders in general, they just go under my eyes where I tend to crease which is like around my smile lines because I'm and like my forehead because I'm a very expressive person. So I just kind of set very lightly, just dip my brush in and set with it. You can actually start to see a dip in this powder because I've used it quite a bit, but I use a very small amount. So that tells you how many times I've reached for this. Since we're on the topic of can make, we have another Cosma Award winner here, which is their Cream Cheek. I got this in the shade CL08, and these are lovely. I love Cream Cheek products in general because I do have dry skin, so anything that can bring a little glow back into my face, I really appreciate. And this is something that I find was really easy to use. This is the type of product you could just dip your fingers in, tap, and go. And also, this color looks a little scary, but when you apply it onto your cheeks, it's very easy to blend. It's also layerable, and it's not so pigmented where you put too much on. It's actually very easy to get a natural look, even with a bright shade like this. These are easy to use, natural looking. They come in a wide range of shades, and it's a very compact little cream blush, which I think is perfect for anyone's collection. The packaging is super cute. So again, like I mentioned earlier, I'm definitely gonna be looking to can make a bit more and probably picking up a couple more shades of this guy because I, I really like it. Now we have the last face product I'm gonna be talking about and this is the Moist Cocktail Fixer. This is from a brand called Majolica Majorica which they're also actually very popular for their mascaras as well. This was a Cosmo Award winner and I was interested in trying this because this is like one of those types of products that has a separated liquid. So it has a bit more of a cloudier type of liquid here at the bottom and I believe the oil here at the top. This is supposed to add 
moisture back into your skin, but also I believe set your makeup a bit and help it last longer. So you just kind of give it a shake and then spritz your skin with this. My complaint about this product was that it does not have a fine mist at all. Like if you see how it mists, it kind of squirts a bit. I don't know, it, it might be my product, but sometimes I'll get like a of, of the um, mist onto my skin and then it just kind of disrupts my foundation. So it's kind of a frustrating product to use. I find what's best is to spray it on an air puff and then go in and pat my skin. I don't know if that kind of defeats the purpose of using this because it might affect the performance. But yeah, I, I am not seeing anything about this product that I am noticing is very unique or different. I haven't obviously tried it a ton because I just picked this up. These are a lot of new products for me, so I will continue to use this. Let me know your guys' thoughts on this if you guys have tried this. But yeah, I'm willing to give this a go a couple more times and Majolica Majorca is a very interesting brand. They honestly have an, a, is another brand like that has the cutest packaging, so we all know me. <laughs> now last but not least, we have this lipstick here. This is actually from Shiseido. This is the Maquillage Dramatic Melting Rouge EX. So I think this is actually a second edition of their original Dramatic Melting Rouge without the EX. <laughs> and it's actually what I'm wearing on my lips right now. This, first of all, the packaging is very pretty on this. I was not expecting this for some reason when I pulled it out. It's just, you know, it's a nice touch to it. The product itself is wonderful. I love how balmy and buttery this is. It's got a bit of pigment to it, but it's not like a overwhelming pigment. It's very um, easy to work with. Again, this is kind of like one of those types of products I consider a low maintenance lip product. I can just kind of throw it in my purse, apply it without a mirror, and I know that it's gonna look good and shiny and keep my lips looking healthy. I have very dry lips, and I don't find that this sinks into the cracks of my lips. Vibrant, but not too bright. Would look good on different skin tones, and just kind of levels up your lip game. <laughs> Whatever that means. So anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and sitting down and talking about Japanese makeup products with me. Uh, if you have any other recommendations, please let me know, as well as recommendations for what I should do in Japan. I will be filming when I'm there, so I will be uploading some travel vlogs, hopefully continuation of the travel breakdown. I actually just uploaded a video from my last time I was in Korea last week, and yeah, as always, I hope you guys are happy and healthy, and don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe, share with your friends and family, hit that notification bell, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys!